fellow brawlers, I'm Karis Time, and it's time to brawl. In this video, I'm going to give you the single best tip that I can for every single brawler in the game. That's 50 tips for 50 brawlers. Now, I will be giving new tips for brawlers that I already shared tips for in previous videos, because I've done this video twice before. And if you want to see the most recent one that I did, you can check it out right there. But these tips are brand new. Let's start off with the Trophy Road Brawlers. Now, skilled players won't be easy for Shelly to sneak up on for maximum damage. And because of this, you should not be afraid of using her attack even at max range in order for you to charge for super. And the same goes for using her super as well, especially if she can super on multiple enemies. This will result in you getting Shelly super more often and remind the enemy that Shelly can actually be a threat. Nita's bear adds a lot of pressure to the enemy team, but only when it is alive. You can help keep it alive by traveling with her bear so that you can tank shots for him and he can tank shots for you. This is especially useful if you have Nita's bear with me star power equipped because the pressure you add to the enemy will multiply with each attack you hit. Sometimes breaking certain walls is more important than dealing damage. Whether it's with his silver bullet gadget or with his super, always be aware of which walls you can break to help your team as well as which walls you want to keep up to protect certain teammates. This can open up great angles for yourself and other long range brawlers on your team. Now bull as well as other close range brawlers are usually not great choices for open maps. So unlike with Colt, try to not take out too many walls using his super. There will be some walls that bull wants to get rid of like a brawl ball goal, but most of the time walls make it easier for bull to get close to the enemy so he can take them out. It's obviously much easier to hit a target that is not moving. So when given the choice between aiming for a brawler hovering around a stationary target, like a safe or a Pam's turret or Apid's turret or whatever, or aiming at the turret itself, always aim for that stationary target. If they're close enough, they will not be able to dodge the shot after it bounces off of it. Up next is Brock, but first, I wanted to give a big thank you to Nova Island for sponsoring this video. You're gonna wanna download this game using the link in the description below because this game is a ton of fun. Nova Island is a new kind of strategy card game that is unlike any other game I've ever played. Instead of taking out the enemy health, you win by building up more energy than your opponent, which actually leads to some really interesting game mechanics that I've never seen in any other strategy card game before. Plus, the game is free to win on iOS and Android. And by free to win, I mean it's actually impossible for you to pay real money for a competitive advantage because all progress just comes from playing the game. In fact, I couldn't even find a shop in the game. Nova Island was launched just a month ago, and the game already has a ton of fun game modes. I personally love the daily challenges, but there's nothing better than beating an actual player 1v1. Nova Island already has 70 cards, and they release new cards every week. Plus, they have lots of fun new mechanics coming in the future. What I find cool is that Pocket Gamer gave Nova Island a five-star platinum award as one of their top new games for 2021. And I've got to say, this is one of my favorite games of 2021 as well. Not only do I love the artwork, but I love how strategic the gameplay is. I have played a lot of strategy card games, and I'm honestly impressed with how many new mechanics there are in Nova Island. You're going to want to click that link below to download Nova Island for free on both iOS and Android. And don't forget to use my creator code, code Kairos, once you've downloaded it. Also, you're going to want to follow Nova Island on Twitter so you don't miss any game news. Once again, a huge thank you to Nova Island for sponsoring this video with such an awesome game, and thank you guys for supporting my channel by watching. Now, while Brock has one of the longest ranges in the game, he's also pretty great close range, but only if you know you can kill the enemy with however much ammo you have. Otherwise, it's usually better for Brock to keep his distance. This is why you want to know how much damage Brock can two-shot or three-shot with and without his rocket fuel gadget before you enter a match. I know it's kind of annoying to do, but I recommend going into the training cave or pulling out the calculator to figure out how much damage he can do with two or three ammo. One mistake I see people make with dynamite all of the time is throwing their dynamite on top of walls. Brawlers can't go there. Instead, attack just behind the wall, or even better, aim at the corners of the walls that your opponent are close to so that you're gonna hit them when they try and go around it. Bow's mines can be devastating to an opponent, but they're also really easy to play around if you know where they are. Try to stay within range of his mines so that even if your opponent tries to set them off without being hurt by them, you'll know exactly where they're going and it will be easier to hit them with your main attack. Now, Tick Super doesn't have a lot of health and it can be easily destroyed, but it deals a ton of damage and helps Tick recharge his super so it's important that it hits an enemy brawler. This is why I recommend throwing his super as close to the enemy as you can so that even if they destroy it quickly, they'll be within the blast radius so they take damage. Sometimes the most useful spot for 8-bit super 
isn't the best if the enemy is able to easily take it out. More importantly, you want to place it in a safe spot so that the enemy has to give up positioning to get rid of it. This is critical for 8-Bit's cheat cartridge gadget and both of his star powers, not to mention the fact that it also benefits both 8-Bit and his teammates for longer. Even if you can't attack an enemy within Ems' super because they're hiding behind a wall, you want to make sure that whoever gets caught in her super stays in her super. This might help teammates take them out, but even if the opponent stays alive throughout the whole super, this will help prevent them from healing up and will help recharge Ems' super. Plus, if you're using her Hype Star power, it'll heal Ems as well. If you know that you're going to hit an enemy with Stu's main attack, always use his super right before it if you have it charged. His super can bring you closer to the enemy, you can get further away from the enemy, you can dodge an attack, or at the very least you can leave some fire on the map. But you'll get his super back anyway, so you might as well use it. And now let's talk about the rare brawlers which really aren't actually that rare. <laughs> Getting that first super of the match can be difficult, so don't be afraid to take a lot of damage and then heal in a safe spot to help you charge up the super. This is best against brawlers with low impact supers, and you don't want to do this against brawlers that have really powerful supers like Jean or Terra. So keep in mind who you take damage from. Now I've mentioned in previous videos that Barley is really good at cutting off choke points from the map and keeping enemies from going where you want them to, but he can also be used to push enemies to where you do want them to go, like within shot of your team. Teammates. A lot of times, enemies will focus on staying away from Barley and won't realize that they're now within range of your teammate. And this is why you should always look at the whole map when using Barley so you can create easier shots so both you and your teammates can get more kills. Now, Poco takes several hits to charge up his super, but it takes a while against a single enemy. If you position your attacks to force enemies to bunch up, it is much easier for Poco to charge up his super, which can make him and his teammates nearly unkillable because that super is great at keeping everybody alive. Now, Rosa can defeat a lot lot of brawlers in 1v1 situations, but she also does pretty well against multiple enemies since she can charge her super two or sometimes three times faster. As long as you are not facing a high DPS brawler, try to get more than one brawler in her range, but only if you have her super ready to go at the start so you can tank their shots and have a second super ready to go once your first shield runs out. Next are the super rare brawlers, which are more rare than rare brawlers, but not really super rare. <laughs> Skilled players usually know to avoid tight spaces when facing a Rico, but even if your enemy isn't close to any walls, you can use walls that are close to you to increase your range. This can be the difference between doing absolutely nothing against a Piper or Brock because they outrange you, to you being able to outrange them by bouncing your attacks off the walls correctly. It takes a little bit of practice, but hug that wall and bounce your shots off of it, and you can crush it with Rico. If you use Super onto an enemy, sometimes he'll roll a little bit too far away and give them time to recover. However, if you hit them at the end of Daryl's Super range, or if you're able to hit them multiple times, Daryl will be able to attack before they land on the ground, which usually means he'll be able to kill them without them being able to even fire back. Now, Penny is very good for taking out things like turrets, totems, and pets, since brawlers can't hide behind them without taking serious damage. Because of this, sometimes it's actually better for you to wait to attack spawnables until the right moment when someone will get hit by the splash damage, which will then also help Penny charge up her super, which is what makes Penny strong. Now, Carl is the only brawler in the game right now with a main attack that actually comes back toward him. If an enemy is hiding behind a wall, you can use Carl's pickaxe to throw it past to where they are and move so that it will then hit them on the way back. This won't deal a ton of damage, but it will prevent them from healing and force them to move, which can be all you need to take them out. We all know that Jackie can defeat brawlers within her range very quickly, but even if brawlers are not within her range, she can still be very effective by staying behind walls that you don't want enemies hiding behind. This will force the enemy to stay away from wherever she is and leave themselves vulnerable to your teammates. Even though she isn't dealing damage, she'll give your team a lot of map control, which can be the difference between winning and losing. Now I'm going to give you guys some tips for all of the epic brawlers. With very little health and some of the worst damage output in the game at close range, Piper does not want to be anywhere near anybody. That's why you should always aim Piper's super outside of enemy range. Because she's up in the air for so long, close range brawlers can usually walk to wherever she's going to land because it's really not hard to predict where she's going to land. If you have a wall behind you and you can't super back, try to go to a side where an enemy is least likely to be able to take you out. Even though Pam has lots of health and the potential to deal tons of damage, she is still a support brawler, so you don't always want to place her healing turret wherever it helps you the most. More often than not, one of your teammates will need it more, so throw it over to them and share that motherly love. Frank has a fast movement speed and actually some pretty decent range for how wide and how strong his attacks are, but since it has a slight delay, you'll want to get a little closer to the enemy than where his reticle ends, so they don't have 
have time to escape his range by the time the attack actually lands. This same tip especially applies to his super as well since it has a longer delay. BB can take a good number of brawlers out with just three hits from her main attack, but some brawlers survive three hits and are left with just a little bit of health left. When you knock a brawler back with her home run bat, you can auto fire her super to deal a little extra damage to them. It's almost always worth it to do this if that extra damage is what you need to finish them off. For B, you really just want to be yourself. Okay, no, seriously though, her B super curves way out to each side and can actually hit some brawlers hiding behind tight corners. It's a really good idea to practice aiming it in the training area so that you can learn to slow enemies down that are hiding behind walls. I wish that Supercell would improve her aiming reticle, but practicing this can help you get so many more kills with B, so practice it. Nani's main attack deals some of the most damage in the game, but it can be very hard to hit. Instead of trying to hit an opponent with all three projectiles, sometimes it's better to just aim it a little bit short so that you have a a much better chance of actually dealing damage to them. She may not defeat them, but she will force them to fall back and will get closer to her super charging up. Edgar is very dependent on his super and it can take a while for it to charge, especially if you don't have his let's fly gadget. So even if you can't completely finish an enemy off, make sure you can at least deal some good damage to the enemy before he's defeated or he has to retreat. This will help him recharge his super much faster and get him ready to jump into combat once he gets back to action. Griff's super deals more damage the further his bank notes travel, but don't let the distance between you and the enemy hold you back from using his super up close because more than one bank now can hit an enemy if they are close to him. So pretty much if somebody's within range, it's almost always a good idea to use his super and this is especially true if you can hit multiple enemies with it because his super deals a lot of damage. Now we're going to talk about the mythic brawlers. Mortis has a very slow reload speed so it's important that whoever he dashes to gets defeated. However, sometimes Mortis can't finish off an enemy and if that is the case, it's usually a good idea to just dash to them and then right through them and continue dashing out of their range just to get a little bit closer to charging up his super. The reason Terra's super is so powerful is because of her pulling effect. The longer it takes for them to reach the center, the more time they are helpless and the more time you have to position yourself and deal damage. So it's a good idea to try to place his super so that the enemy is on the very edge of its range to give yourself enough time to get close and deal as much damage as possible. You can even use her super to pull enemies out from behind walls so they're more exposed. Gene can deal a decent amount of damage up close, but he does not have a very fast reload speed. This is why you absolutely want to avoid pulling brawlers that you will not be able to defeat with Jean's first three shots unless you know that your teammates will be there to help you. You almost never want to pull a brawler unless you have enough ammo to take them out. Otherwise, Jean's just going to end up dead himself. Pretty much every brawler gets better when their speed is boosted because it makes it much more difficult to hit and it can also help close range brawlers get within their target. This is why you should always have at least one of your teammates inside of your super when you activate it. If you can get your whole team a speed boost, that's even better. Mr. P is not a very strong brawler without the help of his porters and it can take a while for him to charge up his super. This is why you want to play very patiently until you charge his super and then follow his porters into battle in order to block shots and find enemies hiding in bushes. Even if it takes half of the match to get porters going, they are hard counters to a lot of brawlers and can make a very big difference really quickly so there's really no need to rush with Mr. P. Unlike the other throwers, Sprout's main attack has to hit the ground before it is thrown. This means that if his attack is thrown right before a wall, it will bounce back, but if it lands on top of the wall or even a little bit further, it can actually increase the range of Sprout's main attack. So unlike Dynamite, it's actually a good idea for Sprout to attack onto walls since it will make it safer for you when you're trying to win your lane and even help you when facing another Sprout. It's much easier for Byron to hit his teammates with an attack than hit an enemy, so it's a really good idea for Byron to be within range of both of his allies. This is why Byron typically plays best in the middle of the map or at least close to a brawler that has lots of health so you can get the most of his healing ability. This can help your whole team stay alive on the map longer since they won't have to fall back to heal as often. Now Squeak's bloms take a while to explode, but they cover a pretty large area. Throwing his attacks in bursts of two on both sides of an enemy can make it very difficult for them to avoid. This will make it easier for you to charge your super and help corral the enemy where you want them to go. Up next, we're going to talk about the legendary brawlers, which actually are rare. <laughs> Obviously, you want to memorize exactly where all six of Spike's thorns are going with and without his curveball star power. Once you learn the pattern of his thorns, you can aim his projectile specifically so it will explode in the perfect place so that the needles will burst out to where they hit an enemy instead of just throwing it toward the enemy and hoping that it hits. Not only is this going to make it easier for you to hit enemies, it will also make it easier for you to dodge an enemy spike attack, so pay close attention. While Crow's super is very strong and really fun to get kills with, Crow has very little health, which means that it's usually not 
not a great idea to try and use it to get kills. In competitive matches, Crow Super is often better used to escape sketchy situations or just to move him to a better spot on the map. I promise you that by using his super in any way other than to try and get kills, you'll be much better at staying alive, which is almost always more helpful than actually getting kills, especially if it just results in you dying. After activating Leon's super, things can change in an instant and you might not want to be able to take out the brawler that you were originally planning on ambushing. If you can't reach an opponent undetected by the time your super is used up, at least use it to hide yourself in a different location than where you were before. By moving to a random bush, it won't be a complete waste of your super and you'll still have a pretty decent chance of ambushing an unsuspecting enemy. If a group of bushes leads into Sandy's super, it's almost like an extension of the range of the super. Sometimes it's a good idea to place his super on the edge of as many bushes as you can, and this allows you to travel from one group of bushes to another and stay hidden even after the super runs out. It's pretty easy to avoid Amber's oil once it's just sitting on the ground. If you're trying to set an enemy on fire with Amber's super, the best way is to throw it right on top of them and start burning the oil as soon as it is in the air. With a good throw, the enemy will almost always get lit on fire, which means that they'll either die or have to fall back for a while before they can heal. And finally, we have the Chromatic Brawlers. While it is fun to push enemies with Gale's super just because you can, Gale's super is almost always best used for when close range brawlers get a little bit too close. His second best use is for pushing brawlers out from behind walls. Just be careful not to help the enemy team escape with this super. You want to play aggressively with Surge until you charge his super since it doesn't matter how much you die as long as his super is charged. Once he is upgraded, you want to play more passively and do whatever you can to stay alive. Surge is arguably the best brawler in the game when he's upgraded to his last level, so your top priority is not dying once he's upgraded. Colette is not the best brawler for defeating brawlers. In fact, she's pretty terrible at it, but she is one of the best brawlers for keeping brawlers health low. That's why you want to attack brawlers that have full health as often as you can and let your teammates finish them off rather than trying to focus on the same brawler. You might not kill many brawlers yourself, but you'll be dealing a ton of damage throughout the entire match. Enemies are hardly ever going to want to step on an ice puddle, even if it's in a spot that they need to get to. So sometimes it's better to just throw your super on top of them. Even though it might not be exactly where you want the puddle, the enemies will still be easy targets and you can recharge your super much quicker because they'll obviously be slowed and frozen. Colonel Rust's main attack can be kind of tough to use and its damage is only about average. Because of that, it's almost always better for you to use your super and give it to your teammates to boost their damage instead of your own until after both of your teammates already have it. Once an entire team has the damage boost, it is a steep uphill battle for the other team. Brawlers that don't have a lot of total health tend to play far away and try not to get hit by another, so there's not really a need to tag those brawlers with Bell's super. This is why you always want to try and land her super on the enemy target with the most health, unless there's an emergency or you just need that last little bit of damage. If a tanky brawler with short range is tagged by her super, they're pretty much good for nothing until they're not tagged anymore, which means they have to die. Buzz deals tons of damage up close, but doesn't have a lot of range, so nobody really wants to get near him. This is why you want to hide behind walls that are close enough to brawlers that you can charge your super off of them passively. It may take some time, but with just one super, Buzz can instantly change the game around, so it's usually worth that slow start. Ash's robot rats are very fragile, and some brawlers can destroy all of them with just one attack. This is why you want to throw his super so that the rats spawn on all sides of the enemy, so that they will at least get hit by a couple of the rats and be forced to use an extra shot or two. Even though they don't do a lot of damage, they build up Ash's rage a lot, which can make him much stronger. Longer. And there you have it, 50 tips for 50 brawlers. But wait, there's more. When I started working on this video, I didn't think a new brawler was going to be released very soon. So here's a bonus tip for Meg, even though I haven't had a chance to play her against actual players yet. While in her mecha, Meg's attacks are wide enough that she can attack around walls while still using a wall to block shots for her. She can actually fire around both sides of a wall if you're angled perfectly, which makes this a pretty solid defense against some brawlers. I don't know how useful this will be in an actual match, but I thought it was interesting, so I figured I would share. If you like this video, I make more Brawl Stars videos. You guys can subscribe right there. And also this video, these two, these two videos are the videos that I put out with tips for the Brawlers way back forever ago. Either way, guys, use code Kairos to support my channel in the Brawl Stars shop. And for now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.